Peace, my people. Welcome, welcome to another episode, Visual Caffeine. You're live right here, vizcaf.com. Thanks for coming to join us for another brilliant episode, man. We got a legend in the building, a style master, and we're going to do some building. We already did some building off screen, but we're going to let y'all be flies on the wall and take the conversation right here to you live on Visual Caffeine. I told y'all we got a legend in the building, a style master. I want to introduce the brother Skeen. Peace, man. Peace, brother. My pleasure. How you doing? Thanks for having me. I'm good. Yo, thanks for making the track. Thanks for being here. Yeah, you know what I'm you. saying? I feel like it's very important, especially in today's times, to spread this information, the history, our story. Right, right. You know, and I, I'll start off um, by saying this, man. Um, I build with youth every day. And what I see happening, you know, I'm in a school in Brooklyn, New York City. I'll mention groups like A Tribe Called Quest. Who's that? Crickets. Who's that? You get my point. Yeah. What do you feel is some of the steps to make sure that the youth stay connected to the elements, the foundation elements of the culture? Well, uh, one thing, you know, I was reading um, L.A. Sunshine's book. And uh, in, his, in his forward, one thing that he mentions, you know, which we all know is that you know, especially as uh, you know, urban urban people, black people, people of color, the main contributors to um, hip hop culture. Of course, yeah. what's important is that we tell our own story. Absolutely. So you 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 see here, you know, as um, as as hip hop continues to be the worldwide uh, phenomenon that it is, you know, they they try to capitalize it, capitalize on it, and tell the story for us. Absolutely. So you know, the main thing to me is we we got to get out there, man. And, and tell, tell, tell your version, because if you don't tell it, somebody else is going to tell it, and it's not going to be the same as you. Great, great. So, do you invest in your future? And if you do, well, I got eight kids, so yeah. Okay, so yeah. there you go. There you go. Now, I ask that question a lot, just because it's important to know the different facets and ways that people invest in their future. Right, right. So, you got eight children. What right. are some other ways you feel like, I invest in my future? Right. Well, I mean, let me go back to the kids, though. The kids, it's not just a matter of having eight kids. Of course. It's the fact that, um, you know, my eight children, from their different perspectives, hopefully by, uh, you know, being around me, uh, when I deal with the culture, you know, discussions about the culture, mm -hmm. discussions about what's going on, how the culture is relevant to everyday happenings, that, you know, when, when, when I pass on and return to the dust, you know, those things kick back in Absolutely. and then they can continue to be historians uh, you know, in, in, in my stead and speak for me when I'm, when I'm in the Absolutely. Oh, that's important. You're right. You said, you said earlier, telling the stories. I feel like that's the only way, you know, the stories stay real. And we both know that even within our lifetimes, how real do those stories really stay? Right. We've seen so many stories get diluted and tampered with during the journey. Um, one of the things I was thinking about on the way here, it kind of made me laugh. Um, I was born in the South Bronx, but I moved around a lot. But a family joke, you know, at the table they always mention, I used to call the trains the fast bus. Mm -hmm. I used to love to just get on the train and ride, but they didn't realize that I was riding. But at the time, in my mind, it was just advertisements. Right, right. It was supposed to be like that. Right. You know, I was looking at the colors. Right. I was looking at what was so-called vandalism at the time as beauty. Right. As a kid. It was normal. Exactly. So when I talk to older family members now about that, they get why that was so important. At the time, they didn't necessarily know. You know, my grandmother at the time didn't like what was happening. Right. She felt it was a negative thing. Today, she reversed those thoughts. Right. How does that happen in your family? Do y'all have those conversations? or? Yeah, definitely. Um, unfortunately, none of my kids um, are really old enough to remember uh, the old New York, so to speak. Mm -hmm. You know, the old 42nd. No they doubt. didn't get to see that. You know, that whole landscape has changed. Of yeah. course, the subways uh, have changed. And, and those things were normal. Now, to me, when you get on a train, yeah, it's clean, quote unquote, but it's depressing. 
Mm. Okay? Mm. It's 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 depressing. It almost looks like a sanitized, like a hospital waiting room. You know what I mean? It's like the RNs <laughs> and the love. yo be cool because you know they 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 do studies on uh, color theories and how colors affect the psyche. Absolutely. So they put those certain colors because they want you to be chill on the train. Mm. They want you to be calm, cool, and collected. Uh, and so that's why we have those 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 black color patterns. But growing up with with, with writing and graffiti on the train, it was normal. It's normal. And if you grew up with that, when you look at the trains now, it looks like something's missing. Absolutely. I, I feel like it also, in some ways, stimulated visual learning. Of early. course, of you know, course. It's of like course. when you think of a lot of the young people from areas that have things on the walls and you know advertisements everywhere, they're visual learners. That's, That's how right. They're taking information. That's right. You know. Um, another thing. You know, I'm not going to front like I'm this connoisseur of the art form of the expression, but one of the blessings I did have, my first trip out of the country ever, I was booked by Phase 2, my group Science of Life. We went to Bologna, Italy. He was living at the time, and he gave us so much in, I want to say, that five-day period of just gems and information and names to look up and people to go back to. Right. He damn near uh, told me he knew some of my family. You right. know, that's how deep it was. But one of the things he really mentioned was style. And he was really, you know, pertinent about, yo, like certain styles that originated the whole movement and right. kind of like found, gave foundation to different writers to keep it going. That's right. Like, who would you say are some of the peeps that did that for you? Well, um, definitely I would have to start, um, and, and I don't want to go back on the whole history lesson with the yeah, beginning yeah, of, of the, the tag and of all course, of that, but of when you're talking about style, phase two, of course, is a name that's going to immediately come to the, you know, rise to the top of that list. Yeah. Um, and although he may not have um, created all the styles, what, mm-hmm. he, what, he, what he did create was the desire for style. He, he, mm-hmm. started, a, he started a format. And from that format, the desire and the quest for style began. He, he, he was a, I'm not going to say he was the only one because I wasn't there. I don't know that. But what I do know for a fact is that he was a front runner in, in the, um, um, how can I say, exploitation of style. As, a, you know, take, taking basic letter forms and doing something funky with them, mm-hmm. twisting them. Now, we all know writer you know the culture you know the majority of the letter forms came from um, advertising uh, comic books things like that many of the things we still use today like 3d's shadows different shines and all that a lot of that stuff came from 70s um, uh, advertisements uh, posters concert posters things like that but then what we did with it what, what, what phase two and those early pioneers did with it was they put a further twist and basically created a new Fun, uh, mm. so to speak, and so that's wow. that's that's what he gave us. He gave us the foundation for how to know, as Case Two said, how, you know, I knew to get better, right? And so it's the elevation of style and wow. evolution of style from from period to period. That's wow. that's and, and that's more important. It's like the old saying: if you teach, if you give a man a fish, he eat for a day. But if you mm-hmm. teach him how to fish, he can eat for life. And that's exactly. what he did. He taught us how to fish. Wow, wow, wow. That's brilliant because that perspective, I feel. Uh, the type of things that people, you know, take in and it changes their entire viewpoint. And even myself standing here thinking about that. Style is important. Of style course, style is, is everything. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, style yeah. is everything. <laughs> yeah. back to you know the reality of right now you know we're dealing with a time now where things are real you know you got to keep your eyes open you got to be aware you got to feed yourself right what are some of the best ways to deliver the foundation culture to the new generation without it being because what one thing i noticed is there's not a lot of stories that teach them about that in a cool way that they would care about. Yeah, uh, 
you know, once again, our, our culture has been adulterated. In this instance, is because of the internet. The internet um, took a lot of the, uh, the closeness and the, the family and the mentorship program out of the culture because now you can you can press on YouTube or whatever. You can get on just about any social media and see a thousand pictures of writers, a thousand b boys. You know, up rocking, you know, floor sure. work. You can look at it without really having to go speak to someone and sure. learn from someone. So, in that regard, um, you know, the culture is watered down because there's no mentorship. And that is, a, you, you can directly see that reflection in New York City graffiti in particular. And in New York City graffiti slash writing, style writing, uh, whatever um, acumen you want to use, is not. Uh, it, it's not developing uh, like it should be, but we're very stagnant. We have we have not produced the next generation of style masters. We, we, we failed to do that. And we failed to do that because of the internet. And then our next problem is we don't have enough programs that reach out to the youth. So we're no longer, um, or we're not on a big enough scale getting with kids mm -hmm. and exposing them to writing. See, back in the days, a child, just like you said, riding on the train, he yeah. would have seen that. Seen but that. now, because he doesn't get on the train every day and mm -hmm. see that, he's not exposed. So unless, unless we set up a program, we bring kids in, teach them the history, mm -hmm. show them how to do it, we're not going to produce the next set of style masters. The next problem is that most of the practitioners now are grown men. Okay? Yeah. You know what a grown man, yeah. the average grown man, doesn't want to be told what to do, how to do it, when to do it, don't want to take criticism, right? Don't want to accept help, don't want to ask for help. Okay? That's good, being a man, independent, but it has drawbacks, right? It's like the old the adage about men never ask directions when they get lost. And that's very true. You know, we tend to try to plow through on our own. But what happens is you wind up going down the wrong direction. And then you so far gone, it's very difficult to come back. And then let's heap the internet on, on top one more time. So now you're producing, let's say you produce a graffiti work and you post it on social media. And you have many, many people who really don't know what they're looking yeah. at yeah. but it looks colorful it looks yeah. you know and so what do they say yo that piece is fire yo that's dope yo that's bad mm -hmm. right the problem is these people who are telling you that yeah. they don't know what the hell they're talking about <laughs> and so then when a person who's qualified comes and discusses it with you you call them a hater yeah. oh yo you a hater because everybody said my joint yeah. was fly well everybody like who Okay. Back in the days, what we had, the bench, the writer's bench, that's where your work was qualified, observed, judged, and it was judged by practitioners of the art. It wasn't just John John Q. Public, you know, behind a computer screen. Yo, that's fire. Yo, that's hot. Yo, that's nice. Okay? And so that's why we're, 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 we're stagnant. And the culture is blossoming everywhere else. But America is in a love-hate, and New York in particular is in a love-hate relationship with rap because, you know, it just, just has a bad uh, history. Definitely. Definitely. Wow. Nah, that was powerful, man. I'm taking it all in. Just because what you just mentioned, I feel like that's, I don't want to say issue, but it is. It's a it's an issue and a stagnation within all the elements. Right. That very same right. scenario. Well, it, 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 it's a damned if you do, damned if you don't. So, for yeah. example, if you are, uh, and I'm going to use this term because it's only because it's relative, but if you are, uh, and I don't like it because it's gang terminology, but if you if you a so-called OG writer, old school writer, sure. and you don't talk to a person, then they'll say, yo, this dude is stuck up, he don't talk to nobody, <laughs> blah, blah, blah. So that's the one side. No but then if you go talk to him and try to help him, then it's like, Yo, this dude try to tell me how to do my piece. And, <laughs> you, you know what I mean? It's like you damn if you do, you damn if you don't. True. Okay. True. And 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 thirty something years ago, it wasn't like that. We routinely um, chastised each other, mm -hmm. critiqued each other, mm -hmm. snapped on each other, no cracked on each other, no and but that was part of the learning process. Yeah, but now true. today, it's very difficult to offer assistance because not all. But many people take it as you disrespecting them, trying to tell them what to do, let me do my thing. You know? Okay. Right. 
So, so in your opinion, what is the next next level of style? Like, where is it going? In your mind, where does it need to go? Well, to me, it needs to go back to the foundation. Uh, the found, first of all, the foundation. The foundation is strong, and everything everything else can grow on top of the foundation. Our foundation is in New York, mm-hmm. and I'm only going to talk about New York. I, you know, like I was speaking to Pez earlier. One of the um, uh, best things about a scholar is to know your limitations. Right. And one one too many scholars, they try to speak on every subject. You could ask them about open heart surgery, and they'll try to tell you yeah, something yeah, about it, yeah, even yeah, though yeah. they don't know nothing about open heart surgery. Yeah. So I'm not I'm not going to speak on any other part of the country, any other part of the planet. But I know in in, in New York, like I said, we're not producing the next um, a generation of style masters. Okay, and uh, man, there's some cats out there that's fire, mm-hmm. right? And then you got because New York is the train mecca. A lot of New York cats will say, "Well, yeah, man, but they never rode on trains like." Oh, you know, like we yeah, did, but guess what? Nobody cares about that anymore, exactly. right? What they're looking at now is the art form yeah. and the um, the elevation of the of the, of the style. Okay, so back to your question: style, foundation, right? What guys? A lot of them now, not everybody, is about a lot of colors, five thousand arrows, a hundred million designs, right? But when you peel back those things, the letters are weak. Okay? Mm-hmm. And New York is not an effects-based uh, writing institution. New York is a letter-form-based writing institution. We've always been known for our letters, yeah. right? Yeah. Ever since the term Wild Style was accepted by Tracy 168, uh, you know, the King 168, um, we've taken at the heart Wild Style, right? But at the base of that was letter formations it wasn't mm-hmm. just illegible and that was another thing we you know legibility was always a part of what we did now some of these joints are so fanciful you can't even read what it says yeah. right and then you have a lot of extraneous uh, arrows for example so for example on arrow theory there's some things i talk about with arrows right and so for example let's just take an arrow you will have a starting point you have a direction a destination, a purpose, then an end point. So if your arrow does not fit all five, or at least the majority of those five criteria, mm-hmm. then the arrow is useless. Okay. So what happens is you have guys just draw a thousand arrows just because they think more arrows is going to make the piece fire, but it's not. If the letters are weak. You can put a thousand arrows on it. It's a, a weak letter with a thousand arrows. Appreciate you being there, man, because I feel that this this conversation and you know so many conversations like it need to be seen, need to be heard. You know, a lot of times when I'm here on this platform, Visual Caffeine, I don't always like to preach to the choir. I know there's a lot of people who watch who are already in tune and know and know the history. I like to really focus on the newcomers, the right. cats who don't know, the cats who reach back from hearing different names and different expressions, etc. Um, my next question is, in terms of all that we've been talking about, connecting the dots, um, we were talking about that analogy with people living in certain areas and naturally how you move for survival depending on how you grew up, right. where you came up. Um, what do you feel about, you know, your art form, your expression, particularly, and it existing in other places and how it exists, uh, you know, from the inner about, cities to right, okay. across seas, just from your knowledge, what you've seen, what you've heard during the journey, like, how do you feel about the expansion of it? Do you feel like it's a great thing? Do you feel like... Well, I definitely think the expansion is great, okay, because any 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 um, idea or, you know, conceptualized uh manifestation of anything that stays stagnant and in one place is useless okay so for it to grow and expand is great but we always gotta be mindful to look back at where it came from absolutely all right we've got to do that and it's almost like a carlito carlito's way 
uh, type deal. So you know, you had Carlito. He came back from the from the from the joint, mm -hmm. and then he had the young the young gangster on set, uh, uh, Benny Blanco from the Bronx, right? right? And so Benny Blanco was the was the new man on the no block, doubt. right? No doubt. And he wanted respect, right? And then, but Carlito was the OG, and he was like, yo, you can't demand my respect. I give it to you when I'm ready, right. right? But both of them actually were wrong, which is why Carlito wound up dead. They were both wrong. Benny Blanco was demanding respect, and he was expecting to to get the respect of the OG in, mm -hmm. in his time, mm -hmm. okay? And Carlito, likewise, was out of pocket because he was very dismissive of him. So some, so some way the two generations got to meet in the middle and show mm. mutual respect. One can't be saying, oh, well, yo, I'm from 1980 and yo, you should respect me and blah, yeah, blah, blah. True, true. While there is some truth to that, you do have to respect the people after you. Because remember, somebody did it before you. Okay? And so that, that's what we got to come to terms that we got to start. We got to close this generational gap. And yeah, or else that this is why we're sinking. We're sinking in New York because the generational gap is so so high. And then we have divisions, you know, like yo, I'm a '70s dude and I'm an '80s dude. I, I remember when I was writing, we never spoke in those terms. I never heard nobody say, or at least it wasn't a general topic of discussion. Like yo, I started writing in '77. Nobody cared. What was, what was important was what you did when you wrote. A lot of people wrote and didn't do shit. Didn't That's contribute. True. Okay, or the contributions was minimal, right. or even negative. Right. So when you when you wrote is 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 no way more important than what you did when you wrote. And we've got to get away from that because these are just other examples of division. Okay? You know, other other examples of division is race, uh, what borough you from, uh, what lines you hit, who your man was. Okay, and 35 years later, we we got to eliminate those barriers. So that we can come together and reclaim Absolutely. our position as the mecca of this of this culture. Because if we don't, what's going to happen is 35 years from now, we're going to open a textbook, yeah. right? And the textbook is going to talk about graffiti. Mm -hmm. and it's going to be Europe, exactly. people from Europe, all exactly. in the book, and yeah. you're not going to see pictures of Phase Two. You're not going to yeah. see pictures of Riff 17. You're not going to see pictures of Tracy 168, Billy 167 going to see pictures of cats from Europe if we're not careful. Yeah, I mean, keeping it 100 to that point. Not too long ago, a uh, young person showed me a meme. It was like, is this true? And it was a meme that said Tupac in 200 years. Oh, with the white like, dude Tupac. with the rag. Yeah, of yeah. course. That's exactly <laughs> the point. That's exactly and I the laughed point. and I said, you know what? Yes and no. This is true in a sense where things like this have happened. And will continue to happen if we don't protect our culture. That's right. And, That's right. And, and value it and keep the tradition of the stories going. That's right. But what you said is the most important. Look back. Always. Oh, back. you always got to reach yeah. back. You always reach back. And you can't. You, you can't come in something thirty years later and act like you were better. Exactly. Exactly. So I'll say this. Um, do you have any projects on the horizons? Oh uh, well, you know, I'm I'm drawing. You know, I do a little commission work here and there, but okay. I'm really drawing for my own just to keep, uh, you know, keep fluid. No I got a couple battles coming up. I'm supposed to battle um, uh, my man Sack, uh, Sack One, nice. uh, here. Hopefully, when the weather clears up, okay. we was gonna do it um, this year, but it's probably gonna be spring 2017 okay. when the weather warms up a little bit. Right. And then I got a couple, you know, a couple more battles lined up after that. I'm also trying to get a show. Uh, going here in New York, hopefully, uh, because I think it's important to, um, uh, you know, show good face at home uh, first, and then worry about worry about abroad. So that's that's basically what I got going on, and uh, and I paint at Tough City, you know, Tough City tattoos in the Bronx no, no. pretty no, no. regularly, okay. uh, and we do it just for the fun of it, shit talking, you know. Uh, me and Chain have been talking shit to each other for 30 years and it, it ain't gonna stop. Keep it going, right? Yeah. So what's the best way for people to reach you? Um, I do have an Instagram account, but I'm rarely on it. I'm getting ready to get on it. Okay. But uh, I'm mostly on Facebook. Uh, I got a page, uh, Scheme 3 Yard King. 
Okay. Or, or you can find me on my regular. That's, I think they call it a fan page. I, I don't really like the word, but that's what it's called. Okay. And then uh, my regular page is Jihad uh, Ali. You can find me on Facebook on there. Yeah, we'll post it up so you can see it. For sure, for sure. Hey, brother Steve, man, thanks for sharing. Thank for you. Sure. Peace, this is man. so important. I feel like hopefully this has inspired, you know, more things in terms of just, you know, I know I'm walking away with a ton of gems. Right. A ton of gems, a yeah. ton of perspectives. And I I wanna I wanna give those things to the new writers. I'm not I'm not a closed uh, a closed off uh fountain. You know, I'm an open fountain. That's beautiful. But you can't make a a horse drink water. You, know, you can take them there, but you yeah. can't make them. So, listen, you know, we're here. Um, you know, if you if you see me on deck, yo, if, if you can pull me to the side. You don't have to be in front of 20 people. Yo, pull me to the side. So, y'all got a question. What do you think about this? The way this looked, the way this is bent, because it yeah. makes sense. Okay? And because what happened is 30 something years ago, we spent almost every day with each other. Mm. Okay? You know, most of us cut school. Yeah. Quit, quit school. I quit yeah. school in the ninth grade, right. and I spent almost every day with the people that I wrote with. Okay, you know more so than my family. My girlfriend used to be like, "Yo, what do you mean you?" Yeah. You know, I'm like, "Yo, I, 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 I got to go. Yeah, I'm going yeah, bombing." Yeah. That's right. Yeah. And um, but that's changed. Now we're grown, and because we're grown and we have families and responsibilities of our own, we don't spend time together where the natural. Um, passing on of knowledge would have occurred. Mm -hmm. okay? And it wasn't like a formal setting where somebody was standing there with a stick teaching a class. Of course. It was four or five people sitting in a circle drawing no and cracking. See, this is what they don't understand. The snapping was a form, uh, uh, was a jovial way to yeah. give criticism. So if I say, yo, look at that show, that's whack, yeah. right? Yeah. In reality, what I was saying, look, bro, need to make that a little smaller, no blah, blah, blah. But because we don't do ciphers and all of that like we used to mm -hmm. these new cats and a lot of them mean well yeah, right yeah. but they're not receiving the proper instruction because they're not spending time with the style mess that's real that's one of the things that happened in the mid 80s to late 80s mm -hmm. is the majority of style masters had stopped writing and if they didn't stop writing many mm -hmm. of them were ravaged by drugs Word. You know, after Word. after crack hit in '85, yeah. yo, cats was doing everything. Yeah. You know, we were smoking angel dust, yeah. we were smoking dust. Yeah. Cats were sniffing coke, yo. And then when crack hit, cats tried crack because you know when it first came out, we people who was doing coke and stuff like that at the time was looking at it like a new free, a form of freebasing. Of it wasn't till later on that they realized how bad crack did you. Yeah. And it wasn't no one time thing. Uh, you know, once you hit it, you fell victim to yeah. it. And there was a lot of in the writing community that fell victim to that yeah. older style. And so once the style masters disappeared for various reasons, mm -hmm. um, the younger cats was left to fend and learn on their own. The mentorship mm. just, it, it just disappeared. That's real. Yeah. Wow. That's real. And I would say out there, you know, this isn't my opinion, but I feel like in this culture, there are no secrets, you know, especially if you're a style master, you can only be you. No one else could be you. So you got to share those gems so that the upcoming has something to feed from and make later better and keep the culture strong and powerful. Indeed. Indeed. Yeah. And that's what I want to see. I want to see yeah. New York take its rightful place. No doubt. You know? No doubt. Before, before, I, before I'm in a pine box, I want to see New York make a rebound. I, I want to go to my grave knowing there's a next generation. Like I was on the phone with somebody the other day. I said, yo, name me. As a matter of fact, I think I was talking to I said, name me 10 dudes that you would look at their work and say, yo, that's nasty. And, and all I heard was silence. Wow. Okay. <laughs> now, of course, I gave him some names that he yeah, couldn't name. I, could, yeah. I, I eliminated the usual yeah. suspect names. I yeah. said, I don't want to hear the usual suspects. The fact that he couldn't blah, 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 blah. Yeah, but know? once you yeah. eliminate the usual suspects, okay, you know, 30 years ago, you would have been able to name 30 people, 40 people. That was nasty. Yeah. Today, you'd be hard-pressed to name 10 dudes mm. who... It's just fire. Mm -hmm. And I'm talking about in New York. No doubt. Okay? No doubt. You'll be hard pressed to name 10 nasty dudes from this era that, who that we can look and say, sense. that's right, sense. who we can look and say, yo, this cat right here is going to be, yo, he's going to be fire. Mm -hmm. Okay? And without without the instruction from the, from the 
<clears throat> from the style master, so to speak, they're never going to um, really, really get it. No doubt. No doubt. Visual Caffeine, we here, we live. Peace. Thanks for joining in. Peace. Before I go, I'd be remiss if I didn't um, give respects to the dead. Rest in peace, King Case 2, Alive 5, um, Frosty Freeze, oh man, Billy 167, RC 162, just to name a few. Um, those that gave it all on the tracks and, um, you know, just gave it everything they had. I also want to say a shout out to New York City Crews, INDs under Phase 2, Riff 170, Checker 170, King 2, the Magnificent Team, Teen and K, and the rest of the Buns Chain 3, of course, Fed 2, TB2, Peace to Sack and Shame, Peace to Task Crew, Peace to TC5, uh, both types, the Blade and Comet era, as well as uh, the, the boys scene and docking the boys, sign of cats, FC crew lose. Uh, my man Dash, yo, the old, the old heads, man, King Jester, Dash One. Uh, yo, just so many to name, man. I apologize if I left anybody out, man. But uh, yo, peace to New York City writing culture. Visual caffeine.